Miss Andrew here. Welcome to Hanging at Hecrot. And we have gone batty this week. What a great animal to learn about during this Halloween time. So Wisconsin has eight species of bats. They're in two different categories. So you have your cave bats, and that's your little brown bat, your big brown bat, your northern long-eared bat, and your eastern pipistrel, which is also named the tri-colored bat. The cave bats are the ones that hibernate in the winter, while our tree bats, which are the silvered hair bat, the hoary bat, the eastern red bat, and the evening bat, which was just discovered in 2015 in southern Wisconsin, these are the ones that migrate down south in the winter. Now that we learned about the different species of bats we have here in Wisconsin, let's learn a little bit more about bats from my coworker, Miss Heather. Hi, Miss Heather, what are we learning about today? Hi! So today I thought I'd share a little bit about bats. Um, bats are our only flying mammal in Wisconsin. Uh, flying squirrels do not truly fly because they have flaps of, of skin and they use that to glide. So bats are our only flying mammal in Wisconsin. And one of the bats that we have in Wisconsin is the little brown bat. As you can see, they're pretty tiny. They're not real big bats like you see in the movies. So these guys, their head and skull is about the size of a dime. So you can see very, very tiny. And they weigh about seven pennies. So if you put seven pennies in your hand, that's about how much a little brown bat weighs. So they're pretty small little guys but they make a huge impact on, on our environment because little brown bats can eat up to 600, up to 1,000 moths and mosquitoes in one hour, and they're out hunting all night long for insects. So think about how many insects they're eating. This jar has about 600 M&Ms, so to give you a visual of how many of those moths and mosquitoes they're eating in one hour. So you might be wondering, well, how do they find their food? Well, bats have a very interesting way of finding their food, and it's called echolocation. And so what they'll do is they'll emit a sound, and that sound will then bounce back to them, and that helps them to navigate through the forest, through the wetland, through, the, through your neighborhoods, so they dump up into trees or telephone poles or even your house. So it helps them to uh, find out where they're going in the dark, and it also helps them to find those insects because the, it, the insect uh, vibration will bounce back to them as well. So it helps them find their food. So where do bats live? Well, bats like to live in wetlands because of course we have a lot of insects in the summertime. If you ever, you've ever walked at night or at dusk, you know that wetlands have a lot of mosquitoes. That's one of the favorite foods that they love to eat. So another place they live are in caves in wintertime. They do hibernate. Some of them migrate warmer places for winter. And some of them in the summertime will roost in bat houses. So next you're gonna find out a little bit more about bat houses and how they help bats. Now that you guys are awesome bat experts, let's go see what my coworker Emma's up to. Hey Emma, what you looking at? Oh, hey guys. I'm looking at Hecrat's newest edition of bat houses here at the reserve. We got these this past summer. You'll notice that they're a little bit different than what we used to have on the reserve. They're much wider and much more narrow than what we used to have. And the reason that is, is to kind of replicate the layers of bark that bats tuck themselves in between during the day to sleep so that they have energy to find a bunch of bugs that night. Awesome. Can people put bat houses in their backyard? Absolutely. We definitely recommend people putting their own bat house in their own yard. That's a great idea. And the Wisconsin DNR has provided wonderful plans on um, how to make these wonderful bat houses. We'll provide the link on the, on the post below. Hey Emma, tell me about the white nose syndrome. 
Weight loss syndrome is a disease that is caused by a fungus. This fungus causes changes in their bodies that makes them burn up their fat storage that they absolutely need to survive the winter. With that fat storage being burnt up, that causes them to wake up, leave the hibernaculum, and fly out of their cave. Unfortunately, it does have a 90 to 95 percent death rate, and that is why this disease is so destructive to our bat community. So, Emma, what is Hecrot doing to help this? That's a great question, Andrea. What we're doing here is we're doing some bat monitoring. I talked a little bit about our bat roosting boxes. We also do bat monitoring, and that is done with this super cool machine called an Anabat. Up top here is a microphone. And that microphone actually hears and records the ultrasonic noises that bats emit. As we walk the reserve, it records each of these ultrasonic noises and then also takes a GPS location. That data is then sent out to the DNR and the DNR has the ability to read these um, frequency graphs and are able to tell each different species that we're actually seeing here at the reserve, which is super cool. We have seen all seven of our bats on the reserve. Our most commonly seen is our big brown bat and secondly, our little brown bat. That's awesome. The feeding call of the little brown bat. Now that you guys know more about what we do at, at Hecrat, let's talk more about echolocation and some fun activities that you can do in your own home. So echolocation is the use of sound waves and echoes to determine where an object is. So bats release this high-pitched frequency with their mouths and nose, so high that we can't hear it with our ears. And they release the sound waves, and the sound waves hit an object, and the echoes bounce back to the bat. And they can determine where an object is and how big that object is. They can find objects as thin as a human hair using their echolocation. This helps them hunt food at night and also navigate in the dark. So actually, echolocation is a very important tool for bats. An example of echolocation is using a tennis ball and hitting it against the wall. As it bounces, it comes back to you. It hits the object, bounces, and comes right back to you. Something you can try at home. Um, this is exactly what a bat is doing with its sound waves. So it's sending out the sound waves, it hits the mosquito, and then the echoes bounce back towards that bat. Hi Luke, what do you got here? What I have here is another example for echolocation. All you need is a slinky and some yarn. First, tie a piece of yarn around the top of the slinky, enough for your ear to fit around that loop. And then gently place the loop around your ear and then tap the bottom of the slinky. And what you'll hear are sound waves spiraling back up the slinky and you can even hear them in your ear. Very similar to how a bat has echolocation responding from a moth or tree as it comes back to them as they're searching for food. This is a great affordable option for you to try at home and in your classroom. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that was fun. I hope you guys have a great Halloween and come on out for a batty hike here at Hecrot. Special thanks to Community First Credit Union for being our community partner in education. Oh, I was thinking of one of those trucks, because of their support, we're able to provide awesome programs for you. Special thanks again to Community First Credit Union for being our community partner in education.